Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 63 of the Cloud Computing Australia show featured on YouTube and podcast with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialists placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. This week we're excited to have as our special guests well-known leading experts and influencers Joe Peterson of Clarify 360 and Charles Johnson of Alert Logic. Joe Peterson is the Vice President of Cloud Services for Clarify360, which focuses on cloud enablement and security. Joe is the founding co-chair of Cloud Girls, which has since been awarded by CRN, Woman of the Channel recipient for the last three years. She is ranked as the top 100 cloud influencer by Rise Global, a top 100 key influencer in IoT by Global Data, and a top woman in cybersecurity by Cybercrime Magazine. And in 2019, Joe was named a channel influencer by Informer. Joe is followed by an audience of over 40,000 on Twitter. And we're also pleased to have on the show Charles Johnson, who is the Vice President of Alert Logic, which is focused on ensuring the organizations are enabled to protect their data and infrastructure from malicious activity. Charles began his career in InfoSec, securing communications for the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Joint Communications in the United States Navy. Hi, Joe and Charles. It's great to have you both on the Australia show this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Thanks for having me. Hi, thank you. Yeah, no, that's great. And I, I can't miss out the, the man of the moment. Dave, it's great to have you back on the Australia show as well. Thanks for, thanks for your time. Yeah, another day above ground. And it's uh, great having Joe and Charles uh, on the show. Looking forward to a great show. Yeah, absolutely right. It certainly is. So look, a warm welcome to you all. And uh, it's great to have you all on the Australia show. In this week's show, we're talking about the cybersecurity and security cloud security failures. According to Cybersecurity Insiders, the biggest threat to cloud security is the misconfiguration of cloud platforms, which is the number one concern. This is followed by unauthorized access through misuse of employee credentials and improper access controls, which amount to 55%, and insecure interfaces and APIs. What are your thoughts on these statistics, Joe, and, and what, do you, what would you like to add to them? I think they're right on target. And I'm, I'm really interested in hearing Charles' perspective as well here. But, you know, I wonder if we're ever going to get root cause on why Facebook went down. I wonder. I wonder if we're ever going to figure that out. Because that's, um, it, it seems to me that, you know, config, reconfiguring um, VMs was the reason given. And, and I'd be interested to see if there wasn't some other aspect going on there as well. Don't know. Um, that aside, I think that that fairly well outlines what's going on today, what we see in enterprises. Uh, and what are your thoughts then, Charles? Yeah, you know, I think the biggest thing about these statistics is that they, they highlight more of the human issue. Uh, generally speaking, the, the people that are building out cloud, ar cloud architectures are really the cream of the crop, uh, you know, from technical skill sets. And they're leaving sort of the traditional uh, infrastructures to people who haven't really made the leap just yet. And so we're seeing the best and the brightest build these uh, these architectures out, and we're still having the same issues. So I think, you know, while you have a lot of uh, issues with maybe, you know, configuration and things like that, I think some of the classical blocking and tackling um, it, are things that we need to pay attention to. It, Great, good old governance, if you will, making sure that we have policy and procedure and auditing in place to make sure that the things that we need to make sure that we're configuring are actually implemented uh, in, inside of these cloud environments. And, and because we don't really have good governance um, in the cloud, you see, you're going to see way more of these uh, these breaches and, and in, improper configurations uh, manifest over over time until we get our arms wrapped around that. Yeah, I agree with uh, Charles and Joe. I think that uh, ultimately this is going to be a uh, uh, a training challenge. This is about people and processes, you know, more than it is about technology. I think the, you know, certainly within my clients, everybody's you know willing to throw money and technology at the security problem when it really kind of comes down to, you know, the difficult issues that we need to tackle in terms of uh, training people in terms of uh, how they're processing things. Uh, making sure they're alert to uh, issues and bringing it up and raising it up to people who can actually correct them. Uh, but more importantly, the ability to put process behind it. I mean, Charles just kind of hit it. I mean, it's the ability to do audits, the ability to do, um, you know, the due diligence you need to ensure that you're being proactive in terms of how you're dealing with security. 
And I, I think that uh, we're just so used to picking technologies and tools to kind of, you know, pacify us and, you know, take us to some domain that's supposed to be, you know, sec- that's supposed to be, uh, you know, the nirvana of security. And that really doesn't exist. It's the hard things that typically aren't technology related, which gets us in trouble. Yeah. Joe, would you like to add to that? Well, so I want to ask David a question because I've read a statistic that 40% of cloud purchases are coming from marketing. So my question is sort of tongue in cheek, right? You know where I'm going. If 40% of purchases of cloud are coming from marketing, then how can we secure stuff we don't know about? Well, we can. I mean, that's the problem with shadow IT. Um, however, IT needs to be proactive and to ensure that things aren't being connected to the network that aren't authorized and be able to go figure out what's going on and proactively you know, educate people in terms of the fact that they need to come to holistic security. I mean, we've been, it's actually getting better. I mean, it's five years ago, four years ago, this is more of an issue. You know, people, you know, having Salesforce accounts and AWS accounts and Google accounts and things like that to do, um, you know, marketing analytics. And then we would discover it and have to figure out who was doing what and what were they doing. And typically it was without, you know, security, um, you know, security, any security kind of built in. And so it's funny, it's like IT is not only responsible for things that they know about, but they're also responsible for things they don't know about, um, which is a big stretch right now. And I think that um, ultimately you can certainly fight back uh, against it. However, I think that's going to be a losing battle. You have to enable these people to help them do their jobs. There's reason which that they acquired the cloud technology kind of around IT's, uh, you know, around IT's uh, notice and you kind of figure out how to uh, secure them after the fact. And so I've worked through probably a dozen of these things in the last two years and it's just the way it goes. Yeah, I'd, I'd tag on to that to say that your, your better leaders in IT understand that they're there to enable the business. So if you don't have a good connection with the CFO, if you don't have a good connection with the chief marketing officer, if you don't have a good connection with the chief operating officer to understand the tools that, that they're leveraging to, to execute on their initiatives, then IT is always going to be behind on those things. And they're going to move around IT um, to, to make sure that we're getting uh, business done. So the, the best consultation would be to the leader of IT to make sure he's plugged in with the rest of the business and not, not operating in a silo. And then you can uncover those things naturally and actually contribute uh, to, to a healthy build uh, of business tools and analytics. The, the, the other piece to that is really making sure that the IT team is mature to handle um, that growth uh, as a whole. And I think if you're doing those two things, the IT team can actually be consultative in those processes. And, and we're seeing a lot of that with the mature um, team. So if you think about FinTech, for example, um, I haven't run across a, a FinTech team that, that's executing in the way that we would expect because quite naturally the discipline is associated with risk. They understand how to manage that and they're forced to. Um, but I think what we'll see over the next call it 18 to 24 months, is sort of this resurgence of risk uh, not not abated as the middle portions of the country uh, begin to do cloud adoption. So we've seen the edges, sort of the coasts, do uh, cloud adoption, and, and that's getting quite mature. And we've seen sort of reduction on the execution of risk uh, uh, there. Um, but I think we're going to see a lot more threats proliferate as, as the middle portions of the country begin to adopt this new technology. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's well put. So, Joe, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question as well. So the basic shared responsibility model made it clear that the cloud provider secures the hardware and software of the cloud itself, while the customer is responsible for security of the assets within the cloud. You know, is this something that's still in effect? And, you know, why is there confusion <laughs> about this going forward? That's a great question. Oh, that is a great question. And I'm so glad that you went there because Charles and I have talked about this, you know, offline, right? I think that they get confused. And I'm like Charles is is talking about there being a geographic sort of disposition to this, at least in the US. I, I don't know about overseas, but at least in the US, you've got more mature cloud teams on the coast. And people, a surprising number of people are still physical in this in the middle, right? And so they think that when it goes to the cloud, the cloud provider is responsible for everything. And they forget that because cloud has changed the footprint, they've changed the security posture. Um, and they don't think about things like 
holy cannoli, everything went to Office 365. Now my people are getting their email over here instead of here. And, oh, do I have endpoint protection? Oh, no, I forgot that. You know, so basic stuff like that, they just think about after the fact. And so it's like they're trying to s s tie a security bow on everything after they've already gone to the cloud. I don't know. That's that's what I think. What's your take, Charles? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's going to be more of a, uh, a juxtaposition of acceleration and velocity. And if you think about traditional IT, you, you'd make a big capital expenditure and the servers would sit there, the applications would sit there, and generally nothing would change unless there's some sort of compelling event. Um, today, the rate of change is astronomical and, and the cloud accelerates that, which is all great benefits. But again, if you're not, a, not ahead of that or, or really managing that change and building security and operations into that, uh, you're, you're going to have really, really negative events. And, and we can see where the best and the brightest uh, companies with the best talent, um, money's not an issue. They're still struggling with the rate of change and making sure that they're keeping things secure um, while they're going through those changes. So, you know, a, a, you know, a, you know million dollar company with, with you know, a company with million dollars revenue for example that only has five guys in IT and they've never seen any rate of change the way that they're going to see it in the next five years they're just really not trained they're not you know built to handle that that rate of change and you know keeping pace with the business so so you're going to have all sorts of mistakes associated with that it's a business mistake to make sure that you're moving forward without uh, managing that risk appropriately and it is really not positioned well to make sure that we can have that that speaks nothing of the skill gap and so inherently understanding where all of those things are, um, we're hoping that there's this panacea and the cloud is gonna be able to help with that. And Amazon comes in and says, hey, you don't have to worry about any of those tools, you're secure here. Well, great, I can ball that up and throw it away, no big deal. And, and, and we really don't dig into what I'm responsible for and, and what they're responsible for. And, and let's be really frank, about that it was the cloud vendors that pushed that forward because the risk was being unfairly pushed uh, onto the cloud vendors and they needed to draw a really decent demarcation line um, between uh, themselves as the provider the service provider and their clients their customers their subscribers so i think we'll see that evolve over time i think you'll also see where the cloud providers make it a lot easier through their offerings uh, for their subscribers to to be able to you know close the gap on security uh, but it, that's going to be a long time coming. We'll we'll be seeing this problem for the next 10 to 15 years. Yeah, absolutely. So, and Joe. Oh, yeah. Well, I was just going to say that's super interesting because, you know, you're circling something that I was hoping we'd get to, which is philosophy, right? So I believe that cloud is as much about an organizational change as it is about a technological change. So if we've treated IT like mechanics for all these years, you buy a bunch of gear and then you get in there and you fix the gear and you tune the gear and you're responsible for gear, right? Where's the business skill set for that group of people? Because now they're managing cloud providers and that's a completely different skill set. You can't put your hands on it and fix it. You have to know how to talk about different business KPIs associated with performance. You have to be able to hold vendors to SLAs. You have to be able to work with procurement and understand what the contracts look like, right? It's a whole different skill set. And are we providing a disservice to, to IT folks by not expecting them to be business people? I, I just wonder. Yeah, I think that I I, <clears throat> I think that uh, we are providing a disservice. And I think it comes to uh, the fact that there's there's a training gap and a skills gap between uh, how we should configure security and what's actually being done. Uh, I mean, um, you know, we're, I'm seeing Amazon buckets that are routinely exposed. You know, things aren't encrypted. You know, uh, um, and I'm not really a security expert. I'm not an auditor or someone who specializes in security. I'm an architect, so I understand good security when I see it. But you know, I'm not necessarily with Charles's skills or your skills. You know, and kind of understanding where things go. So this kind of leads to, you know, the final question, you know, since this is the Australian show, Australia has to typically deal with um, organizations that are outside of their country um, many of the times because they can't live in a microcosm. They have to basically deal at international level. So what, how does security or cloud security, and this is a general question, change from country to country? And how, you know, should we consider the compliance stuff only? Should we consider... 
uh, what encryption is allowed? Should we consider sanctions? Should we, you know, consider the legal issues? Are all of the above? And Charles, I guess I'll go to you first, maybe, and then we'll go to Joe. Well, uh, here's what I would say. GDPR showed us that we always have to operate at the lowest common denominator. So if you're participating in the global economy and your clients or subscribers are also participating in the global economy, you need to make sure that you're providing, you know, an equitable service that allows them to pass their audits appropriately. And, and you're going to see the drive for demand um, push you in a position where you're going to have to do uh, like sort of uh, compliance. Um, GDPR proved that across the board. There were a lot of people initially in, here in the States that said, well, I'm not worried about that. No way. I'm not going to have to, uh, you know, comply with any of that. And it wasn't six weeks before, you know, people here in my org started saying, hey, can we provide this as a service? Is there something we can do? Because demand is huge. Um, so the, the, the lowest common denominator, it doesn't really matter where you are located. It's really going to drive your, your compliance strategy, I think, as you go to market. What do you think, Joe? I think it's absolutely right. I think, you know, we're going to see more of this, right? We're going to see, I remember, you know, building out data center environments in Germany 10 years ago, and Germany was really ahead of the curve, right? You're smiling, you know. Germany was ahead of the curve. They didn't let, you had to have, if you want a DR, you have DR within Germany, right? Another DC in Germany, because the stuff couldn't leave the borders, of the country, right? And now we're starting, and now we've got GDPR, and now we're going to see more and more of this happen globally, right? It's it's a sort of um, so. What are we doing to prepare for it? What do what do we have on our roadmaps that are going to allow us to comply with these sort of regulations? That's the thing to be thinking about. Good to agree more. So, Brad, we're back to you. Yeah, absolutely. Look, it's been a fantastic show. I've, I've I've thoroughly enjoyed it. So, listening to all, all three of you talk about this, it's been uh, yeah, it's been awesome. So, um, yeah, it's uh, I'm looking forward to the C Suite show and the training show coming up as well. So, we've got another two to record, and I know we've got time constraints today. So, uh, look, I really appreciate your time uh, over in uh, over in the states on a Sunday. So, yeah, thanks for being on the show, Joe and Charles. It's been a, an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And thanks to you, Dave, as well, obviously. Uh, always great to have you on the shows. Always a pleasure. And you can get everyone on Twitter. And look, we really appreciate all your support on Twitter as well, by the way. So uh, keep on those retweets and, and liking what we do. That's uh, fabulous. You can get Joe on Twitter, which is at Digital Cloud Girl, and also Charles, which is at Mobile ATCKJ. David's on Twitter at David Linthicum, and myself at Nelson underscore Hilliard. As standard, all the links will be in the description box below, along with all our links to the blogs and everything like that. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. All the best until next week.